Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So I will talk about dual energy imaging with dual source CT systems. Um, we have already heard a lot of basics, but I will quickly repeat it. Um, uh, so dual energy is a well-known principle in, in radiography. For example, uh, if you use two energies or two spectra with different KVP, you are able to reconstruct uh, images of two different materials, like shown here a soft tissue image and a bone image. That, that's exactly what uh, Dr. Shi showed in his presentation with the scout. And by this, you can, for example, distinguish between, uh, between bone and soft tissue at high density. So you can clearly identify that this nodule or whatever this is, is bone and not soft tissue with a high density. Dual energy is also known for a long time in CT. It was introduced in the 80s um, by the Somatum DRH scanner, and this time this scanner also used KVP switching, but the problem was that uh, the tubes at this time were not that powerful, um, so you were very limited with the available power at both spectra, and the detectors were not that fast, so that's the reason why it disappeared again from the market. Um, as Dr. Shea uh, explained, Using a material decomposition, you're able to select two arbitrary materials, for example, calcium and soft tissue, and reconstruct a soft tissue image and a calcium image, which enables um, quantitative mineral analysis of the bone, for example. I, I will, as I explained, I will quickly go into the details again. Um, if you generate two spectra by, for example, different KVP, 80 and 140, they have different peak energies but they also differ in their mean energy. But the problem is, um, although the peak energy is very different, the mean energy doesn't change a lot. Many materials show different attenuation at different mean energies. This was also shown in the previous presentation. Um, that's because there are two main uh, effects that contribute to attenuation, and the reason that the K edge of iodine has a very low energy is that the attenuation coefficient of iodine increases much, fa much faster than that of bone if you reduce the energy. A very elegant way to realize dual energy CT is dual source. Dual source means you have two pairs of tube and a detector which are located on one rotating gantry and rotated by 90 degrees against each other. And this system has a lot of advantages with respect to clinical applications. For example, you can improve the temporary resolution for cardiac, you have double power reserves because you have two tubes, and you can use it for dual energy imaging simply by operating both tubes at a different KV. Today, a lot of clinical applications are routinely used um, in, in the clinical environment. This is just a collection. Two new ones just got 510K. I will pick up a few of them and go into the details. A very basic application is a so-called contrast-enhanced viewing. This means you combine the benefits of the high contrast of iodine in the low KV image with a low noise of the, of the total data, of the mixed data. So you can see that the contrast is comparable to that what you get from the ADKV image, but you have a noise that is comparable, uh, comparable to the mixed image. Another very important application is the two material decomposition. We've also heard about that, but I will describe a method that is based on, on images. It's not based on raw data. Um, it's, it's based on the fact that you reconstruct two different sets of images for each KV, for each spectrum, and then manipulate the data in order to separate between those, those two materials. The diagram shows the Hounsfield unit at the low KV spectrum and the high KV spectrum. This means every pixel in the image is represented by a point in this diagram. For example, um, blood is the orange point over there, and a mixture of blood and iodine is this point over there. And all the points on this orange line represent different ratios of a mixture of bone and iodine. On the other hand, you can take a mixture of bone and bone marrow. So the pure marrow is this point. A mixture of marrow and bone is this point. If you draw a line, all those points on this line are 
mixtures of both materials. You can then define a separation line, and then it's very easy to assign all pixels above the line to iodine and all pixels below the line to bone, which enables an automatic bone removal without any user interaction, like shown here. So without any interaction and morphological algorithms, you are able to subtract the bone from the CT image, also in very complicated situations like uh, in the base of the skull where the corroded arteries go directly through the bone. In the same way, um, calcified plaques can be characterized because they differ uh, from the surrounding tissue because they contain calcium instead of iodine. And this is uh, very difficult to see in the conventional CT image. You can automatically characterize them and subtract them to have a clear view onto the remaining vessel lumen, for example. By changing the two materials of this uh, decomposition, um, you can, for example, characterize stones in the kidneys. We've also heard about that. So here, um, with a suitable separation line, you can classify stones with high nuclear charge, uh, colored here in blue, for example, hydroxyapatite or oxalate, and stones with low Z material, for example, uric acid. And you can color them, characterize and color them automatically. With, again, with different set of materials, you can characterize tendons, which are nicely shown here. And they really light up in a CT image. Um, and it was really hard to see them in a conventional CT image. So this is the mixed image of the dual energy, uh, energy scan, and it's really hard to see the tendons while they are very obvious um, uh, due to the dual, dual energy information, and you can clearly see the rupture here, which is hard to find in a conventional CT. This is another clinical application used routinely um, at detection of gout. A very promising and more complicated uh, method to deal with the dual energy information is the so-called three-material decomposition. Again, you see the diagram, uh, the Hounsfield unit at 80 kV and the Hounsfield number at 140 kV. First, you define a baseline, def uh, which is given by two materials, for example, fat and soft tissue. So all pixels on that line, again, are a mixture of fat and tissue. The third point is iodine, and then every pixel which is located inside the triangle is a mixture of those uh, three materials. By projecting this point onto the baseline, you are able to quantify the iodine content and to either reconstruct a pure iodine image or to subtract the iodine from the image, the so-called virtual non-contrast image, which is almost equivalent to a scan without contrast agent. Again, here's an example. On the left-hand side, you see the mixed image of a dual energy scan where the iodine was removed and overlaid again with a different color. This dual energy information, for example, solves the ambiguity between low fat content and iodine uptake. We've also heard about that. Uh, because you cannot be sure that if you see a uh, white area or high CT numbers in the, in the conventional CT image, that this is iodine uptake. But if you have the soft tissue information and the iodine information separately, you can distinguish between those two. And moreover, you can quantify this iodine uptake in the tumor and at the tumor surface, which, is, uh, which allows a differentiation of benign and malignant tumors and which is important for monitoring of therapy response, for example. Changing the three materials, there are a lot of applications, for example, questions in the field of pulmonary embolism. In this case, you see here an ambulus, but it looks very similar to a contrast-filled vessel, like over here. But using the dual energy information, you can clearly see that this is not iodine. It's soft tissue with a higher density. So it's clearly, clearly an ambulus, and you can directly see um, uh, the, the hypoperfusion hypo of, of, the, of the lung tissue here, which is caused by this ambulus. This is the latest generation of dual source CT. 
Um, the new system contains two tubes, each with 100 kW. They are now in an angle of 95 degrees. The angle has increased by 5 degrees in order to have more space for the second measurement system. Um, the detectors are 128 slice detectors, each with 64 times 0.6 millimeter collimation and Z-flying focal spot in order to increase the Z sampling and the resolution in the Z direction and a faster rotation time than the previous system. Uh, with respect to dual energy, this system contains a special filter which can be introduced into the high energy spectrum. It's a tin filter, uh, more precisely 0.4 millimeters of tin, which, um, which reduce the amount of low energy photons in the high energy spectrum. So normally, although there are different peak energies, you have a relatively large overlap, which reduces the quality of, of your dual energy information. By the tin filter, this overlap is significantly reduced, which directly improves the available dual energy information. And the quality is now that good that a dual energy scan is completely comparable to a conventional CT scan, but you get additional information that is not available in a, in a normal a CT scan. For example, here, this is an example of the first generation of dual source. This is the, the latest generation of dual source with the same dose and image quality of the mixed image. You have a significant improvement of the virtual and contrast image. Here, the noise is reduced by 25%, which corresponds to approximately 50% to, to the quality of 50% higher dose. And also, the iodine information is more reliable now. And this is the proof that it's really a dose equivalent. On the left-hand side, this is a, a single source CT scan with 120 kV. On the right-hand side, it's 100 kV and 140 kV plus the tin filter at the same dose. And you can see that uh, Hounsfield numbers of iodine as well as bone and the noise in the soft tissue or in water here in this phantom are identical. So this is the proof that you don't need extra dose to do a dual, dual energy exam. But besides the, the mixed image, which corresponds to a normal CT scan with contrast agent, you get a lot of additional information. Uh, for example, the virginal contrast image, the iodine uptake. You can automatically remove bones or plugs, and you can do PE evaluation from the same data set without any need of an additional scan. These are new applications which, are, which have recently been introduced into the market, measurement of lung nodule enhancement. I don't want to go into details here. And xenon concentration measurement, which allows to uh, quantify the ventilation of the lungs. And of course, the dual source data can also be used to, to calculate monoenergetic images. All the results you've seen up to now are uh, acquired with the dual source system, but an, a very interesting question is how do dual source compare to other realizations? So there are a lot of other possibilities to do dual energy CTs. For example, a sequential acquisition, which means you do an 80 kV scan and subsequently a 140 kV scan. Due to, if there's any motion involved in the body, uh, like unfortunately it is. Uh, for example, uh, a beating heart, motion of the lung, varying contrast agent. I think that's the biggest problem in CTAs. Um, you get re registration problems and the dual energy information is useless. So this cannot be a practical solution. There is fast KVP switching, um, which can be done with a single source CT if the detector is appropriate and the tube can do it. Um, the problem is that you um, only switch the KV rapidly between adjacent readings, but you don't adapt the tube current. This means uh, because the generator cannot do it that fast and also the tube is not, uh, not cap uh, capable to do that. This means that the noise is distributed unequally between the low and the high energy data, which reduces the dual energy performance of the system. And the second problem is of that method that although the tubes or the power of the tubes has increased, 
you, you still have just a partial uh, time of the rotation for each spectrum. So you are limited with the available power compared to a dual source CT. A further alternative are sandwich detectors. I think we will hear, hear some details in the next presentation. Um, the principle is simply that you have two layers and more of the low energy f uh, photons are absorbed in the top layer and the high energy photons are absorbed in the, in the bottom layer. The problem is both spectra have the same peak energy, which means an even higher overlap between those two spectra and, the, and worse spectral separation. Um, quantum counting has attracted much attention in the last time, and although it solves a lot of problems or basic basic problems of conventional detectors, like for example electronics noise, um, this principle has some drawbacks. For example, if the flux rate is high, uh, they run into paralysis. If this is compensated for by smaller pixels, for example, um, this will also deteriorate the spectral information, because although you're using a threshold, it's not a binary measurement between the low energy bin and the high energy bin. You get an overlap due to um, fl fluorescence and pileup, for example. Recently, there were some papers on the performance uh, of dual energy. Um, this is an SPI paper from 2007. Here you can see different methods and the dose that is needed to achieve a certain quality of the dual energy information. So the first one is dual KVP, but with an adapted tube current. This is what I've said before, that it's important to distribute the noise equally between those two spectra in order to optimize the, the spectral information. So you can see 80 KVP and 80, uh, 10 milliamps have, have been used here, and 140 KVP and 4 milliamps. So this is in order to equalize the noise. The second method is KVP switching, but with the same tube current, and this is a scintillator, and you can see that it's optimal if you adapt the tube current, and that's precisely what dual source can do, because both systems are operating independently. There is another very recent paper from the this, this year's SPIE meeting, um, which also compares quantum counting um, to the other methods. Here, the dual energy performance at equal dose is shown, uh, shown. so it's vice versa. The, the higher, the better. And dual energy performance means it's the contrast of uh, iodine versus bone squared by noise squared at equal dose. And all the numbers are normalized to the dual source of the latest generation with tint filter. So that's the one here. And you can see that quantum counting is very good. This simulation, or this measurement, I, I have to say, was done with 250 micron by 250 micrometer pixels, which are relatively small, but which account for the typical flux rate that you have uh, if you do CT with counting detectors. And you see that, well, it's almost comparable for some object sizes, but it deteriorates if the objects get smaller, for example. Um, the blue line is sequential KVP. This was the old generation of dual source, which is somewhere in the middle field, and these are the dual-layer approaches. Thank you very much for your attention.